Dan and Andrew asked me to talk about my industry and uh, what I see the outlook to be uh, this year. So those of you who don't know my company, Grafe, we're in the AEC uh, space, which is architecture, engineering, and construction. Uh, the market size in AEC in the U.S. is estimated to be about $2.3 trillion in, in 2020. Um, however, it's a very fragmented industry. There are some big players, but there's hundreds of thousands of smaller firms that work in my space. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the outlook I see in the various uh, areas that Grafe works in, and then I'm going to spend some time talking about uh, three what I think are large trends within my industry. Um, and every year we ask our market team leaders who are closest to our clients to forecast what those clients see coming up. Uh, so I want to talk about what some of the feedback we've gotten from them in the different areas that we, as I said, that we function in. So I'll start with municipal work. Um, in Wisconsin, our municipal clients are, of course, challenged by tax levy limits um, as their needs on the labor side, fire and police, and on the infrastructure side, sewer, water, and roads continue to expand faster than revenue. Many communities have embraced development to get around tax lev uh, levy limits, particularly in multifamily development. And they also have u extensively used tax incremental financing. This has caused pushback from citizens concerned about gentrification, runaway development, loss of green space, and in the case of TIF, unchecked debt. Despite such headwinds, we see continued construction by municipalities simply because they must do so to function. Transportation in Wisconsin should be slightly improved because there was a modest increase in funding this year. Wisconsin still does not have a sustainable funding mechanism for roads, highways, buses, or other forms of multimodal transportation. Illinois, on the other hand, enacted a 19 cent gas tax increase late last year, and we see considerable growth in that market, which has struggled for a long term with disinvestment. Florida, another base of our operations, has a very robust transportation funding system, and we expect very strong activity there. We've seen significant growth in airports in all of our markets, particularly in Florida, but also at O'Hare and GMIA, as well as large investment in port and cruise terminals in Florida, and perhaps now in the Great Lakes. Rail and transit has been very strong in Florida, steady in Illinois, but virtually non-existent in Wisconsin now that the hop construction is complete for now. Regarding state of buildings, Wisconsin and Illinois have both made significant increases in their budgets for construction and maintenance, and we expect a strong market in these areas in 2020. Education is expanded, ex expected to stay steady. Higher education, both public and private, is still in the build mode as college and universities compete to attract students from a smaller base. K-12 referendums have passed at increasing rates nationwide, including in Wisconsin. Although conventional wisdom is that bricks and mortar retail is dying, we see steady business in this area as stores and owners are not waving the white flag, but instead they're making investments in their facilities to fight Amazon and compete with online. Residential development has also been steady. Multifamily has been growing in urban and suburban areas. This has happened because of increased demand of young people and retirees to live in a more urban environment or reduce the burden of owning a single family home. This cycle we see cooling off and perhaps ending, but we think there's enough in the pipeline to keep 2020 steady. Healthcare is a market that nationwide we see as flat to declining as consolidation in this area um, has the systems taking a breather in many cases from their building programs. However, Southeast Wisconsin, in Southeast Wisconsin, we have the Milwaukee Regional Medical Center, which has been a big uh, engine of growth, and we see, uh, uh, despite the national trend, continued uh, large amounts of construction here in Southeast Wisconsin. Corporate office construction is another area where the decline has been widely forecast, but where clients continue to build and invest. Um, much of this is related to landlords poaching from people who've not kept up, so it's not a case of the overall growth in the pie, but a redistribution of the pie. The cultural area is growing as museums and performance spaces expand. I'll discuss that a little bit more later. Hospitality remains a steady market in all locations as hotels and convention facilities are taking advantage of the good economy to expand. Uh, in Wisconsin, Dane County, uh, Brown County, and Milwaukee all either have con uh, new convention, large convention facilities under construction or in the planning phase. Um, and finally, the industrial sector has been solid, despite a recession in some areas. In Wisconsin, Komatsu, Milwaukee Tool, 
and Foxconn have all had major projects, and many of those will continue into 2020. The I-94 corridor in Wisconsin continues to be strong. Nationally, pundits have written about the significant effect that Boeing has on the U.S. industrial market and the stimulus effect it could have if they put their troubles behind them. But that remains to be seen. Okay, so now that I've talked about a forecast for specific markets, I'd like to finish by discussing three significant trends which I think are opportunities in the AEC market. The first of these is climate change. Climate change affects all of our sectors, but perhaps none as much as the municipal sector. Uh, my firm, Grafe, has made a big investment in Florida to get into the business of coastal engineering as municipalities there deal with flooding and seek resilience from storms and rising water levels. In the Midwest, municipalities have had to deal with increasingly severe storms and struggle to size storm sewers and retention ponds as current design guidelines do not seem to apply anymore. Although I'd not necessarily attribute it to client change, the rise of the Lake Michigan water level along with the severe storm less than two weeks ago, has caused damage to ports and shoreline facilities up and down the western edge of Lake Michigan. Other severe storms more directly related to climate change will continue to occur on a more frequent basis and challenge municipalities. In fact, I believe in 2020 we'll see another superstorm in the U.S., such as Sandy and Katrina, that will lead to increased calls for more resiliency against damage. The second big issue, and uh, Michael, uh, alluded to this is the aging and deterioration of public buildings and infrastructure. Many of the buildings, particularly here and infrastructure in the upper Midwest, were constructed in the mid-20th century or earlier, and frankly, they're worn out. Where public building owners have been able to partner with the private sector, they've been successful in making the investment upgrade that's needed. I talked earlier about cultural facilities and examples of public-private partnerships in this space. In Milwaukee and Wisconsin, the Milwaukee County Zoo, Milwaukee Art Museum, Discovery World, and major sports facilities such as Fiserv Forum and Lambeau Field have been successful in making the investment in their new facilities. Other facilities such as the Milwaukee Public Museum and the Wisconsin Historical Museum in Madison are in the process of engaging public and private partners to uh, replace their aging facilities. However, where it's been left strictly to government to make the investment required to replace buildings and infrastructures, the results have not been good. Wisconsin and the federal government have struggled to come up with sustainable ways to fund transportation as roads, airports, and rail and transit facilities are way beyond their useful lives. Facilities such as the Safety Building in Milwaukee are past their lifespan with no replacement dollars available. Lead water laterals are a huge problem in many cities with no long-term solution from the government. The government must find a way to fund these replacements as the private sector has done. And the final trend is labor. Low unemployment rates are a problem in most industries, but especially acute in STEM fields. The U.S. does not produce enough STEM graduates, particularly among women and minorities. Long term, we must find a way to increase female and minority participation in STEM fields, but in the short term, we need immigration reform that allows well-trained engineers and technicians from other countries to enter and work in the U.S. So I'd like to talk more about these, but I see my time is up. I think you can tell I'm bullish on 2020 in the AEC field. And I'm um, looking forward to hearing Austin and Jack talk about their areas. So thank you very much.